This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and now for something totally fun and cutting edge. This is the Alienware 34-inch curved QD Quantum Dot OLED gaming monitor, a 34-inch widescreen gaming monitor. So, right, fine. Not the only kid on the block that can say they're widescreen, but Quantum Dot OLED is a new technology. We're just starting to see that in TVs where it's very expensive too, and it marries the best of the two technologies. And beyond that, let's face it, you have very, very, very few choices if you want a large OLED monitor for your PC. We're going to look at it now. So yeah, the biggie here is the fact that it's really hard to find a OLED desktop monitor, right, on the market. The, the, the Few that are out there really are geared towards professionals. They're really high-end, well-calibrated OLEDs. If you don't want to spend $3,000, but you'd like to have that, particularly for gaming and for HDR gaming support, this one's $12.99. It might sound like an ouchie, but for a 34-inch wide, sort of 4K, and the width-wise it is, that's a pretty fair price. So you've got 3840 pixels across, which is standard 4K, but it's only 1440 pixels high. So this is your typical widescreen display. For those of you who are looking for that sort of thing, it's fun, certainly for gaming. I've been playing it's a little bit older game in Assassin's Creed Odyssey and replaying Cyberpunk on this, and both of them support it great and it's delicious. So this supports Visa HDR 400 True Black and also a thousand nit peak brightness mode. And uh, most games actually have support for that in settings as well. Mostly I game with the thousand nit peak. That's pretty much exciting to me versus the 400. So what you've got here is something like a TV-ish experience in terms of that kind of brightness and dynamic range but you've got something that's really set up and optimized for a PC, which most TVs are not in terms of how good they look when you're showing a desktop and using it as a monitor, that sort of thing. So what is QD or quantum dot OLED? So the problem with OLED displays, as you no, no doubt know, is that they're susceptible to burn in So you have to make sure a screensaver runs all the time. And if you're using it as a monitor, it's problematic because you have UI elements that show all the time, like taskbar and windows and stuff like that. And also the brightness is not so great. One thing that OLED's great at is doing fairly lovely luscious color and having perfect blacks, but not so much at getting really bright, especially without wearing out the OLEDs. So one way that they fix that is by adding a white OLED in, but the brighter the OLED, the quicker it burns out. So you get the idea. So, okay, we want something that's a little bit more durable and a little more suited for, well, desktop monitor use where you'd be worried about persistent UI elements and all that sort of thing. So you bring in Quantum Dot, which has been around for a while. Samsung's QLED, basically, or Quantum Dot. So Sony's high-end Bravias, they were using Quantum Dot. Vizio uses that. They're also very nice. They have pretty good dynamic range and all that sort of thing, but not as good as OLED. But what happens if you replace the color filters on top of OLED, which basically degrade the colors a bit and the brightness of them. So as you go up with brightness, sometimes the colors are less saturated with OLED. So instead you use quantum dots as the color array in front or the color filter and you get rid of the white OLEDs that were problematic. Well, you have that kind of perfect marriage. You still have perfect blacks because the OLEDs are still providing the light. There is no LED backlighting on this. So you still got the perfect blacks, but you got something that can get even brighter and is less susceptible to burn in. So much so that Dell seems pretty confident. They have a three-year warranty. Usually in the United States, we only see one, and that includes burn-in coverage. So. There you go. That's why QD OLED is exciting, and yes, it is coming to TVs too. And that means, for those of you who are into TVs, that you might be able to use your TV in a brighter room and, well, still have it not look washed out. So who makes the panel? Well, Samsung makes the panel. Well, LG cornered the market on TV. Samsung does all the desktop monitor OLEDs and laptop OLEDs. So they did this technology. And if you saw some very early reviews, it, I believe it was Samsung actually that sent out these Alienware monitors so they could show off their new technology. In terms of connectivity, this is where I give it some dings. For something that's a cutting edge monitor, you've got your display port, that's great. You have your HDMI ports, 2.0, not 2.1 though. I know some of you would like to see 2.1, especially when you're running the higher refresh rates. Refresh, maximum refresh rate on this is 175 hertz. It does support G-Sync Ultimate and going up to about 100 hertz if you want to have G-Sync plus 1000 nit max HDR mode going on here, which who doesn't want to have that, especially if you're playing games, right? So there's no USB-C. I'm kind of bummed at that. And I like HDMI 2.1. Eh, but then again, given the fact that this is relatively speaking a bargain, 
I'll live with that. It's a beefy monitor. It's got that typical Alienware build. I mean, it weighs over 20 pounds. It's, the stand on this is sturdy and detachable, and you could visa mount it if you wanted, but it's a very well-made stand. So it's got a nice swivel joint so you can swivel the back and forth without having to pick up the big heavy monitor. You've got over four inches of up and down height adjustment and about 20 degrees of tilt adjustment. And did I mention it's sturdy? And because it's an Alienware monitor, you have the usual Alienware white look, and you've got LEDs, which you can turn off if you want to. So you've got the alien head on the back, you've got the oval light up ring, you have some sort of floor or stadium lights, I would call them, along the front, and one subtle one for the joystick controller button that's dead center at the bottom. And I typically leave the front light off so that I'm working in complete darkness in my woman cave at night when I play games. Subjectively, how does it look? It looks gorgeous. When I'm just using the desktop, I typically leave Windows HDR mode off because it can actually not do such a good job with rendering photos and stuff like that. It messes with things a bit. But you do want to turn on Windows HDR mode if you're going to be playing games that support HDR. And then, well, world's your oyster. It looks gorgeous when gaming. It looks beautiful when using it as a desktop. And again, in terms of aspect ratio, you know you and if you can be comfortable with this as a productivity sort of monitor. A lot of people are because they have enough room to have two windows side by side easily enough. While there are black adjustments built into the monitor settings, use your basic joystick driven menus on this. I, I didn't find that was necessary. I didn't see black seams that were pulsing or had residual grays or anything like that. It's quite well handled. The blacks just look black. When you're using it as a monitor and you're just in HDR 400 mode or just in normal mode, not enabling HDR, you're looking at about 250 nits of max brightness. So in that way, it's still more like an OLED. But for an indoor environment, my home office, for example, that was fine. It looked pretty bright to me. But if you need more than that, keep that in mind. That's still, it's more like an OLED in that respect. It's 40 to 50% lower on blue light than the average OLED, supposedly thanks to the marriage of quantum dot and OLED technology, so that's always welcome for eye fatigue. The monitor does have a variety of profiles. I left it in the standard profile mode for doing our tests using our colorimeter. Um, there's a custom one so you can roll your own settings and all that sort of thing. But honestly, at the, on the standard setting, it was pretty good. Gamma a little high at 2.3 instead of 2.2. White point was quite good on it. It was nice. Typically, I, do, I run it in RPG mode. It's a little more color saturated when I'm playing games because that just looks pretty. Who cares if it's accurate? It's pretty. Anyway, you've got a lot to choose from on their selection of settings or again, adjust it yourself if you don't like any of them. So in terms of pros, you can tell it's image quality. It's gorgeous. It marries quantum dot with OLED. So you've got better peak brightness on this and whiter whites. It's very nice looking display. The price is actually a plus in this case. The cons would be no HDMI 2.1 or USB-C connectors on it. And the fact that everybody wants one of these and we all know supply chains are messed up besides, but the yield on these dis display panels is still not that high. So if you order one now and we're middle to third week of June, you won't get it until the third week of August. So there's a lead time in getting one of these. So the Alienware 34 inch curved QD OLED gaming monitor is, like I said, you just, if, if this is what you're looking for, this size kind of gaming monitor, just go ahead and get it right now because the price is actually wildly fair for what you get. And if using a big TV as a substitute isn't really what you wanted, you did want something on the desktop, you enjoyed the widescreen aspect ratio. Yeah, and boy, is it pretty to look at. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos because we want to hit 1 million subs.